Hi everyone, I'm Tickety, and I'm here to share with you some tips that I believe every single Overwatch player can use to improve. I've worked as a professional Overwatch coach since 2017, spending two years with the Dallas Fuel in the Overwatch League, as well as being head coach for Team Canada in the 2019 World Cup. Since then, I've also worked as a private coach for amateur teams and hundreds of individuals just looking to get better at the game, which I'm guessing is why most of you are here today. Some of these might seem simple, but I promise that the more you understand them, the further you can push your skill level. Now let's get started. Let's talk about positioning. My first tip here is to play ranges that benefit your weapon. Overwatch is filled with a diverse cast of heroes with different strengths and weaknesses. Understand which ranges benefit your hero choice the most and try to keep your enemies at that range for as long as possible. You won't get much done with that sniper rifle and melee range and you probably won't be finding many kills with those shotguns across the map. This of course means that you need to choose a strong position whenever a fight's about to start, but it also means you might need to change up that position as the enemies move around you. Instead of only thinking about what targets you want to shoot, try thinking about what positions you can shoot comfortably comfortably from. My next tip is to play for natural cover at all times. Overwatch maps offer a variety of different types of natural cover. There's oppressive high grounds with long sight lines, long winding corners, and of course tight choke points that everyone has trouble breaking through. Take note of positions like these that allow you to play at your chosen range for as long as possible. The use of natural cover allows you to avoid unnecessary sources of damage, while also allowing you to save important cooldowns so you're not wasting them keeping yourself alive. For example, you might stick to important high grounds as Soldier 76 knowing that once enemies start shooting back at you, you can quickly dip back into cover. Or maybe while playing Reaper, you'll move around on the flank undetected so that you can close the distance on your enemies without burning important cooldowns like your Wraith. Even in high pressure individual moments like when you're dueling an opponent, you should still try to use natural cover whenever you can to give yourself the advantage. Whether that's just to avoid a few bullets or to set up a flank that's going to find play of the game. My next tip is that you should update your position as you exchange resources. When I say resources, you can basically think just your HP and any available cooldowns you have. You can take space or move aggressively at the cost of taking damage or using your cooldowns. Conversely, when you have no resources available, you should get ready to back off your position since you won't be as strong without them. You can also use this tip to take note of when the enemy is low on resources themselves and use that as an opportunity to try and push aggressively. It might sound like this tip is more geared towards tanks than anyone else, but I promise it applies to every hero in the game. If you're a DPS looking for a kill without resources, you run the risk of dying yourself or not being able to finish the kill. If you stay in a position too long without resources as a support, you might get dove and not have the tools to keep yourself alive. This exchange of resources and space between teams is often referred to as the ebb and flow of Overwatch. At a high level, players will be able to read that ebb and flow to give them an idea of how aggressively or defensively they should play in any given moment. If you're looking for more resources to improve your game, be sure to check out the Game Leap website. We have hundreds of guides for Overwatch 2 as well as many other games that go a lot more in depth than the stuff you find on YouTube. Specific role and hero courses, step-by-step -step ability and map guides, you name it, we got it. So do yourself a solid and click here to get your membership started. Speaking of resources, let's talk about cooldown usage. Now, every player at some point or another has wasted important cooldowns or even ultimates. My tip to stop that from happening is to try to plan out your cooldowns as much as possible. Picture how you want to use them before they're even needed. The two easiest ways to do this will be to look for enemy threats to react to or enemy positions to punish. For example, using Kiriko's Suzu to cleanse anti-healing effects is a great defensive reaction. On the other side of things, hitting that anti-healing grenade is easier done when the enemy is in a vulnerable position, such as moving through a choke point or rounding a corner. My next tip for cooldown usage is to use them for your team, not just for yourself. Now defensively, this is pretty straightforward. You'll find more value using cooldowns that save all of your teammates instead of just yourself. Again, Kiriko Suzu is a great example here. But also with aggressive cooldowns, you should try and hit targets that are easily accessible to your team instead of just ones you can hit yourself. Going back to Ana's anti-grenade example, hitting five members of the opposing team with anti-healing effects is massive value, but it's not going to mean anything if your team can't follow up and actually finish those kills. My next tip is to try and squeeze as much value from every single cooldown you use. The most amount of value any cooldown or even some ultimates will expect to find in a game of Overwatch is either finding or denying a kill. If you aren't sure if your defensive cooldowns will save a life, or if your offensive ones will take one, maybe you should try waiting for a more opportune moment. Coaches call this limit testing. The idea here is simple. Be as greedy with your cooldowns as you can get away with. This will allow you to build experience and more understanding about when your cooldowns are most impactful and help you be more consistent with your game planning in the future. Of course, even the best players in the world still make mistakes. So my next tip is don't be afraid to fail. Limit testing goes both ways. While we might be trying to push ourselves to be more greedy and find more value with our cooldowns, if we get too greedy and never use them in the first place, that's obviously no good either. 
Overwatch is a game of averages. We're not measured by our very best play of the game, nor are we measured by the very first game we ever step foot in. We want to make sure that we find success as often as possible, but we also need to understand that nothing is 100% guaranteed. All the tips we've been talking about today will help you find that consistency. We're always trying to push our limits higher, but we also need to be willing to fall short sometimes. Whenever this happens in game, don't think of it as a failure, but as an opportunity to learn and be better informed for the next time it happens. Next, I want to talk about what I think is the biggest and most common mistake that every new Overwatch player makes, and that's failing to focus properly. So my tip here is to weaponize your focus. What this means is you need to be focused on the right thing at the right time in order for your plans to have the best chance of success. For many players, the first instinct they have when they load into a game is to focus on whichever enemies they want to shoot at, and sometimes that just means whoever's head is closer to their crosshair. When we do this, we fall into a trap of autopiloting or tunnel vision or whatever you want to call it, which leaves us unaware of other positions, cooldowns, or interactions we could have taken that might have been more beneficial to us. To start this process, Process, you need to shift your focus away from which targets you want to kill and into the other areas we've been talking about such as positions to take or how you want to use your cooldowns. When we do this, a couple things start to happen. The first change being that the game slows down and gives you more time to look around and take in information, giving you the best idea of what the fight looks like before you commit into it. With this time, you'll also be given the opportunity to focus on higher priority targets rather than just dumping all of your bullets into the enemy tank in the front line. And of course, with all this patience comes more value. By having a stronger position and being able to focus on higher priority targets, we'll be able to stay in the fight longer and our damage will find more explosive value. My next tip is to prioritize your team's focus. Overwatch is a team game after all, and we will always find more value when we sync up our resources with those of our teammates. Even if we don't have the best teammates in the world and we have no one communicating in voice, we can still look around the map to see their positions and how they're using their cooldowns to gauge their focus. Like I mentioned when talking about cooldowns, we want to use them aggressively when our team is available to follow up. Well, there's no better way to do this than to use them when you see your team already getting aggressive. By adding your focus to theirs, you guarantee that synchronicity between teammates rather than just hoping for it when you engage first. So let's talk through what our focus should look like as we're setting up for a new team fight. First, we'll find a safe position with lots of natural cover near where the fight is starting, so we'll look for high grounds and choke points to abuse. From this position, we can poke and prod at the enemy, but we'll save any major cooldowns or any aggressive repositioning until we see an advantage where we can sync up with our teammates or catch a vulnerable enemy out of position. And since pretty much every Overwatch fight devolves into chaos after about two seconds, from here all you need to do is focus on the right targets, ideally ones that your whole team can focus down together. And that leads me to our final tip for the video, which is to be flexible with your focus. Don't be afraid to change it during a team fight. As I've talked about, fights in Overwatch are very chaotic and fast paced. There's going to be a million things going on for you to keep track of. It's impossible for you to keep tabs on everything going on at once. This means that the status of the fight might have changed without us even knowing it. So instead of chasing that enemy wrecking ball around the map for the next five minutes, try to ask yourself if it's worth changing your focus target. As I mentioned, the most important time you'll do this is at the beginning of a fight when you're still setting up. But the absolute best players out there are making these distinctions constantly through these evolving teamfights. Every change in position, every cooldown used, and every bullet fired can be a conscious effort if you change your focus to the right priorities. So instead of focusing down one target until one of you dies during a teamfight, try to make these distinctions as you're playing so you keep yourself alive and you keep yourself open to as many opportunities as possible. But that's going to be all for me today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope these tips serve you well on your Overwatch journey. If you're looking for more resources to improve your game, be sure to check out the Game Leap website. We have hundreds of guides for Overwatch 2 as well as many other games that go a lot more in depth than the stuff you find on YouTube. Specific role and hero courses, step-by-step -step ability and map guides, you name it, we got it. So do yourself a solid and click here to get your membership started.